everyone, this is Nikki with Design Like a Pro, and I have a pro tip for you today. I'm going to show you the go-to PDF preset that I use when I'm saving out my documents. Most of the documents that I'm making in InDesign are always intended for print, and they're always intended to go to a printer either with a digital press or plate press. So knowing that, I have several presets that I use, but there's one that I use almost all the time, and it's been flawless. It works all the time that I've used it, which is great. The key though is to talk to your printer and decide what they need. My preset might help you, but if you have a printer that uses different technology, you may run into a few issues with this. So please note, this is not going to be the solve all for all of your jobs, but it is going to give you a great start. And like I've said, I have not had a problem with this. And I use several different printers from online printers that I never meet to local printers that have older technology and it's been flawless. So at least it'll give you a starting point and you may have to adjust accordingly when you talk to your printer. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's get in here with my PDF. This is a page from the magazine that we're working on. This is the table of contents page. And I just wanted to show you what we're going to do today. We're going to save this page out since it already exists. And what I like to do is flatten all my transparency, flatten and outline my text. The reason I still outline my text is because, like I said, sometimes I do go with local printers and their technology is older and I do not want to run the risk of having any font issues. That is a huge thing when you send your PDF, 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 PDF off is to make sure that your text is flattened to kind of limit any font issues. So that is the preset that I have today. And that's sort of the focus of the preset that I use. And to show you what I mean, this is a PDF that was just saved out under regular press quality. Now, one question that I've gotten in the comments is press quality versus high quality. And I'll talk about that when we get into the PDF presets and I'll tell you why I use one over the other. Uh, but to show you, this is just the regular press quality PDF with default settings. I didn't mess with them at all. And you can see that I can select the text here in uh, Adobe Reader. If you can select the text in your PDF, that means that the text is not outlined and that if the printer doesn't have that specific font, you may run into issues. So that is what we're going to address today when I save my preset for you is how it can automatically outline this text for me when I save the PDF, which saves so much time, especially if you have huge jobs. Can you imagine having to go through maybe like a book that's 500 pages and have to outline all that text um, separately? That would not be fun. So this way you can do this in the saving, the final process when you're exporting your PDF. Do it all at once. Saves a lot of time. It's a beautiful thing. So let's jump right into InDesign here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's our page. Say we're ready to go. There's actually three steps that you're going to do in InDesign. And then there's actually one that once you set in InDesign, you never really have to go back to it, which is really nice. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into Edit, Transparency, Flattener, Presets. And there's three that you're going to see automatically. The low res, the medium res, and the high res are already there for you. And then there's the one that we're going to create. And that's this one right here. And I call it high res outlines. You want everything to be high resolution when you're printing. So that's why it's still high res. And then I just called it outlines because I know that's going to convert all of my text to outlines. So if we go in here, you would either create new or edit. Mine's edit because it's already there. But you would give it a name. Make sure that everything up here is maxed out 100. Line art and text is 1200 PPI. Gradient and mesh resolution is 300 PPI. The only thing that you're going to check is convert all text to outlines. In the other presets, this is unchecked, but we want to go ahead and check this. This is that crucial step when we choose this preset in our PDF that's going to convert all that text to outlines. And then you're going to hit OK. So once you set that, that set, you never have to go back to that in any of your new documents. The one thing that you have to do with each new document is this next step. You notice here in my layers palette that I have two layers. One is locked and one is not. Most of my content resides on this blue layer. This red layer is the step that's going to kind of combine this transparency flattener when we 
convert everything into our PDF. So I'm going to unlock it so I can show you what it is. So you want to go ahead and create your new layer in your layer palette and make sure it's below the lay all of your content layers. It needs to reside below it. So if you have a lot of layers here, make sure that it's at the very bottom. Go to pages, go to your master pages. Now in this document, my master pages are already set up. You want to make sure that it's on your main master page that has all of your text. So for me, I really usually only use one master page. So this works here. And on this master page, I am going to create a white box. And make sure that it goes all the way to the edge. And we're going to fill it with white. Okay. And then we're going to right click on this layer, go to effects, transparency, and knock that opacity down to zero. All right. And then we're going to go back to our layer and I like to lock it so that I accidentally don't select that box and do anything with it. So we make sure that it's on this red layer and it's on the master page so that it applies to all of my pages in my document. All right. So then the final step is just to save out your PDF to see the effect here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to file and then we're going to go to export. And this one says no preset. So I'm going to say with preset so we can see the difference. And now I'm not saving out my entire magazine here. I'm just saving out page three so that we can see the effect. But if you had your entire document, you would save it out accordingly. Now I will say in my magazine production, I actually don't save out my entire magazine in one PDF. Each page is its own PDF because in the print production, they don't take page one and end on page 24 when they plate my job. All the pages are kind of mixed up. So for me, I actually save out my pages individually anyway. So you'll see my press quality is what was originally in there to begin with. But now we're going to change all of this up and we're going to create our own. Now, when I drop down, these are the presets that I have. Again, most of these are the default that came with InDesign. But you'll notice down here I have this outlined press quality preset. So I'm going to click on, oops, I'm going to click on that and show you what my settings are. And then as I go through here, you can set these settings. And then when you're done, you would just hit save preset and name it whatever you want to. So let's go through this. I have outlined press quality. This is my go to PDF preset. It's I know that it's outlined and I know that it's press quality. So here's my explanation between press quality and this high quality print. I think most of you guys, if you don't know the difference, you might lean towards high quality print, but actually you need to determine this based on your job. Now, for me, I hardly ever use high quality print. High quality print should only be used for desktop proofing. It's not meant to be used for press print, which is what most of our jobs should actually be going to if you're going to send them off to a printer. That doesn't fall under high quality print. I only use high quality print if I'm going to run a quick PDF proof on my home inkjet printer. That's really all it should be used for. Press quality is what we all should use if we're going to send this off to a different printer, either it be plate, digital, whatever. So that's why we have press quality. Okay. So the standard that I use is this PDF X 2001. It's the standard. It's the lowest. It works for older printers. That's why I use that. Acrobat 4 is fine. You, you can go up if you want to. But again, this is the go-to preset that I use that doesn't have any limitations on the age of my printers, which is nice. And then I have range three because I'm just going to save out three. The only thing I usually have checked on here is optimized for fast web preview. I don't really have anything else checked. Then we go on to compression. All right. If this is going to be a high quality job, you're not going to want to sample your images down at all. So I say do not down sample and my image quality is maximum. One thing to note is this does make for a rather large PDF sometimes. You're dealing with maybe five megabytes or more depending on the actual images used in your document, but that's the way it goes for big jobs. And I don't want to sacrifice my image quality. Then you go to marks and bleeds. I really only show crop marks. There are some printers that want you to use all of this information and then there are some that actually don't want you to mark it up at all. Uh, so you need to talk to them about this. But for me, my default is to use crop marks. Occasionally, I'll check bleed marks if we need to. But the crop marks are the key there.
All right, my output, I always have convert to destination, preserve numbers on, and then I always convert my document to CMYK. Wherever you're located and whatever your printer prefers will definitely determine this but that's going to be my use here in the US. And the nice thing about this is it converts all of my RGB images to CMYK when I save. There's a lot that you can do here that will save you from having to convert all of this. All right, under advanced, here is the key. This is where you select your transparency flattener. By default, you might see one of these selected, but now you'll notice that your new transparency flattener that you set under edit menu will now appear. So I make sure that this is set to high res outlines. And because I'm clicking around here, you're going to notice this now says modified, even though I haven't really modified anything. But anytime you click around your preset, it's going to automatically do that, by the way. Uh, so we're going to set this to high res outlines and then that's it. Nothing else goes on here. So this is my go to PDF preset. So I would click save if I made changes or if you're creating a new one, you would click save and then you would go ahead and name that. And when you're done, you want to go ahead and click export. So now I'm exporting my page three and I'll show you the difference between the two as long as this comes back. All right. So now we're done here and I'm going to go and open up my new PDF with the preset. And overall, it shouldn't look any different than before. There's not too much going on here that would actually cause it to look different. But the key is that I can no longer select this text. All of my text has been outlined. All of my colors have been converted and everything like that. So I thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave comments below. I know this is a different uh, look at PDF presets. And like I said, this is my go-to. Yours might be slightly different where you're located. So please take that into consideration. But go ahead and leave comments below. I'll do my best to respond. You can also send them to ideas at NikkiHeart.com. You can also send ideas for upcoming episodes there as well. I love reading your emails. And be sure to subscribe so that you can stay in the know of all the latest things going on here at Design Like a Pro. Thanks for watching and keep designing. Thank <music> you.